This was actually from a, a film called War Games. A lot of people think this is from Saw, this slide. Um, it's not, it's from War Games, which is a 1980s film uh, where a hacker almost, um, almost started a nuclear war with Russia. Um, so, here's a shot from Iron Man. Um, one from Avatar. This is from The Avengers. And there's four here. There's Star Trek on the top left. Um, bottom left, we have uh, we have Star Wars. Bottom right, we have War Games again. And then top right, not sure many of many of you would get this. Um, this is uh, this is from Knight Rider, which is a series with David Hasselhoff in the 1980s. Um, so, I mean, why am I showing you these things? I'm you know you, you didn't sign up to to come and do a quiz on movies, but um, I guess what we're trying to show here is that you know data visualization is is everywhere um you know you might not really take it in um granted this is all fictional data but you know this stuff is everywhere i have a smart watch that tells me what my heartbeat is how many steps i've done um all sorts of different things you know you, you go out you walk around and maybe you're at a bus stop and you see how long does it, how long it takes for the next bus to come how long you have to wait likewise on the tube or, or whatever in london um so data visualization is everywhere and we absorb it all the time, but we don't necessarily always realize that that's what we're looking at. So essentially, we're, we're, we're translating stuff. So we're taking something that's inherently complex and difficult to, to kind of see the wood from the trees. So that, that could be a, a big spreadsheet, big table of numbers or a database table, that sort of thing where you can pick out individual values, but you can't see any trends etc um, and, and really we're leveraging our our cognitive functions uh, to to actually kind of short circuit that uh, that journey to analyze data by making it visual so we can understand it a lot more easily and this guy Andy Kirk if you spend any time doing anything around data visualization you'll probably come across his name um, he's he's saying essentially data visualization is, is a brain hack. So we're, um, we're exploiting our visual perception abilities in order to amplify cognition. And one way we can do that is by leveraging our memories. So we have, we have three different types of memory, broadly speaking. We have long-term memory. Um, so I, for example, I don't forget my name. I don't forget where I live when I, when I go home in the evening. Um, we have short-term memory where that's where we, we retain something in our, in our minds in case we might need to reuse that information. So, so thinking about the example of the tube trains, if I, if I have to go into our office you know, when we're allowed to and I have to wait 10 minutes for a tube train, that's gonna annoy me for, you know, at the time. Um, normally you should wait you know, two or three minutes for a tube train. However, if I don't have to reuse that information within know a certain amount of time someone asked me two weeks later how long did you have to wait for a train two weeks ago i probably couldn't tell you because i haven't had to reuse that information so i've just forgotten it um, but lastly the most important memory for data visualization is our sensory memory or some people call it a pre-attentive memory as well and that's where that's where you you kind of immediately know what something is just by looking at it. I, I have a mug here. I know immediately that's a mug. I don't have to think about it or you know, a mobile phone, that sort of thing. I, I just know what it is. And really that's the most important thing with data visualization. And the slide that's on the screen at the moment is quite a good example of that. So um, we have a grid of numbers and we've asked the question, how many fives are there? 
and thanks David David's guessed six uh, or worked out six and just by looking at it it's it's pretty difficult you have to scan each row um, it doesn't really jump out but what we can do to make this easier is we can leverage your sensory memory and use one of the main pre-attentive attributes which we talk about in data visualization and that is the use of color other ones would, would include uh, length position orientation uh, enclosure things like that but if we keep the same structure and then emphasize what we want to what we want the user to find it becomes a lot easier so just by using color we've, we've made the fives jump out so that's uh, in a very simplistic example that's what we want to try and do with data visualization data visualization has been around for a long time uh, this one on the screen was created uh, in the 1850s by uh, Florence Nightingale of all people so she's very famous for being um, you know, an eminent nurse um, you know, she's very often you know called the, the, one of the, the mother of modern nursing um, but what people don't realize is that she was actually an, an eminent statistician as well so she was collecting data on all of the people that she was treating and these charts are, are relating to the, the Crimean War and they're called coxcomb charts and you can make them in Tableau um, they involve quite a bit of uh, trigonometry and stuff and, and complex calculations and they're, not, they're also not necessarily data visualization best practice um, but what she's doing here we're looking at the right hand one um, each of those segments relates to a month and the big one at the bottom is January then we're going clockwise from from January all through the months of the year back around to December um, and what this is showing us really is there's some seasonality in the data okay, we can see that April May and June um, the segments are, are really really small okay? and you know this is this is in Crimea uh, which is you know Eastern Europe so it's very cold during winter and what she's doing is dividing the people she was treating, the soldiers she was treating into different categories. And that's what the colors denote. So the red ones are those who were, were killed outright in battle. Um, the black ones are, are ones who were wounded and subsequently died of their wounds that were sustained in battle. And the blue sections, the blue sections are the ones that she was actually most concerned with doing something about. And these are people who died from um, kind of preventable causes. So maybe hypothermia, um, malnutrition, you know, dysentery, disease, that sort of thing. And those are the ones that she could really make the, the biggest difference in. So she was interested in, you know, treating those and improving, improving those. But she came up with this, drew it by hand. Um, and it's, one of the one of the earlier examples of data visualization talk a little bit about tableau so tableau is now uh, as i mentioned earlier it's being used all over the place um, pretty much every company you can think of um, no coding required you can integrate it with r and python if you want to and also custom sql um, but essentially the idea is that it's drag and drop everyone can use it and you can get going with it very quickly and it came out of Stanford University in the US. And we're going to look at Tableau Desktop today, uh, but there are other products in, in Tableau's product line. And their tagline, as we see, we help people see and understand their data. Three people invented it. Um, it was a, a professor and his two PhD students. Uh, and the professor was a guy called Pat Hanrahan, who um, actually has three Oscars. So he um, he created, he was one of the founders of Pixar, the digital animation studio. And Tableau is being used for all sorts of different things. These are some examples. We've got uh, domestic violence against women in Spain, commuting times, um, Sparrowhawk migration, world golf rankings. Um, and it's been used by a load of different companies. This is just an example. So sports clubs, consumer goods companies, universities, public health. And these two guys over here, and also Hillary Clinton, um, so Barack and, and Donald Trump, they also use Tableau to analyze their, their campaign data. Um, all politicians in the US presidential, in their, in their presidential campaigns are required to publish um, what they're spending money on. And both of those 
had Tableau licenses in the data that they made available. So I'm going to have a quick do a quick demo for you guys um, in Tableau, and then you guys are going to have a, a hands-on session with it. So I have a spreadsheet here relating to some measles data. Um, so we have a long, thin spreadsheet here. Uh, we have a state. Uh, we have a year. We have buckets of years. So the data runs from 1928 to 2003, I think. Um, so the first two and the last three years are in a bucket themselves. And then for the main part of the data, we have five-year buckets there. And we have our cases, how many people had measles in the US in that state in that year. Now, we can't really tell much from this. Uh, it's just a long list of values. Um, so let's see what we could do with this. I'll, we're going to do four different data visualizations for this. Um, just watch what I'm doing and you'll get an idea of, of how Tableau works. So I've, I've loaded that spreadsheet in here. Uh, don't worry about that. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But let's see how we can analyze this data. So I'm going to bring out my, my state and my year. If any of you guys have used pivot tables in Excel, you'll find the, the interface pretty familiar. Um, and also I've got my cases, I'll put those in the middle. So we have a big table of numbers here. Actually, I'm going to flip this around because it makes sense if we're talking about time to go from left to right. That's how we normally interpret time. So I'll just swap the axes around. I've got a big table of numbers. Um, doesn't all fit on the screen. And it's quite difficult to see uh, anything. We can see the numbers are dying out in the more recent years, but really from a data visualization perspective, tables are, are only useful for one thing, and that's, um, or two things actually. So one is, is missing values. So we can see uh, Mississippi, for example, and Nevada, uh, they're, they're blank for the first you know, 15 years or so. Um, that, that kind of makes me think that they weren't collecting any data around this. Um, and then as we, as we go towards the end, there's a lot more blank space. Uh, it's a lot more common. So that makes me think that actually, you know, measles might be dying out more recently. So that's one thing a table is good for. Another thing it's good for is, um, is specific values. So if I'm interested in Illinois in 1936, how many people had measles, then I can kind of triangulate to that position very easily. I don't have to, you know, do much else. However, if I asked you what the 10th highest number in this table is, that would be pretty difficult to answer. So that, that's where tables fall down and they can be useful in, in data visualization. If you use them, I would suggest keeping them as small as possible um, and, and for reference only. Um, but yeah, try and avoid them if you can. So what could we do with this to, to make it easier to understand? I'm just going to duplicate this sheet. And Further to our, our grid of squares that we had a few minutes ago, first thing I can do is introduce some color into this. So I'm going to grab my, my cases. I'm just going to put that onto color into Tableau. You can see something's happening immediately. I'm also going to fit this to my screen. There's a little drop down at the top. I'll say entire view. And we can see something's happening. We have a broadly a, a dark side, a brown side of our, of our table. and a light side. I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit, change things around slightly to make it a bit easier to, to interpret. And I'm going to put a, a line onto here as well. So I'll make this nice and bold so you can see it. Okay. So we have that same data in a, a similarly sort of tabular format. However, we're not using any figures. We're actually just using, um, you know, using shapes and color to, to show our data. And what we can see here is I put a, I put a reference line here for 1963. 1963 is when the measles vaccine was introduced in the US. So we can see the, the effect that it had on, the, on the, the number of cases. So I've capped the color scheme in this Tableau workbook uh, so for anything 4,000 or more is brown, um, going down to a kind of light blue color. So we can see immediately things that we can't see in, uh, in our big table of numbers. We can still see that same missing data 
However, we can also now see outliers. Uh, we can see that in California in 1990, we had uh, almost 10,000 cases of measles. Likewise, in, in Texas in 1990, we had almost 4,000. So things like that jump out when you visualize data. Let's look at another way we could do this. Tableau has a very powerful geographic database within it. Um, it's looking for geographic fields in your data. So when it detects them, so in here we have a little globe icon next to our state. That means we can just double click and create a map. Tableau contains the latitudes and longitudes of a whole different uh, kind of different granularities of, of geographical data within it. Um, I'm also going to grab my, my cases at the moment. The map's just telling me what states I have in my data. And if I grab my cases, put that onto color. The whole thing now goes brown. So I, as I mentioned, I've, I've capped the color scheme at 4,000. Tableau is always trying to aggregate. So you can see we have a sum of cases. That's Tableau's default aggregation. So what this is telling me is that for every single state in our data set, the total value of measles cases is more than 4,000. And obviously we've got you know, 75 years worth of data in there. So what I need to do ideally is to break this down. Now, if I look at my spreadsheet, I've got these two columns at the beginning, column and row. Now this is some data preparation I've done in advance. This is gonna create what's known as a trellis or a small multiple chart. And we can see that we've, for the columns and rows, as we scroll down, the numbers increase. So we've got column two, row one, et cetera, column three, row one, column four, row one, column five, column six, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and when it gets to 11, it goes column one, row two, et cetera. And this is creating a kind of tabular effect within our data, even though it's not obvious at the moment. So if I go back to Tableau, I've got those two fields in here. These are blue fields in Tableau. These are called dimensions. And uh, dimensions are categorical data. So they slice up our data and make it more granular. I'm gonna drag this out, put that onto column. I'm gonna put row onto rows. And then we can see that we now have a small multiple map that's been separated out. We can get rid of these headers because we don't need them. And I can get my year and put my year onto detail. That will bring it into the, the view. And I think 63 was when the measles vaccine was introduced. I mean, that's, that's 1963 here. We can see that same data. Our trellis is creating uh, kind of left, right, top to bottom kind of movement within our data. So we can see that the years are increasing as we go to the right and then onto the next decade, etc. And we can see exactly the same thing. So if we go down to here, Texas, uh, 1990, 3,898 and California, almost 10,000. So that's another way to see that data, but in a more geographical context. And the final one we're gonna do before you guys get stuck in is we're gonna do a more kind of typical data visualization. So we're gonna grab our years, that's our buckets of years, and then I'm gonna grab our cases as well. Tableau has given us a bar chart. Now this may be good enough for what you're doing. It shows a pretty dramatic picture. We know that the measles vaccine came in in 1963 um, and there's a pretty dramatic effect there in the subsequent uh, buckets of years. But I have more, uh, more data that I can use. I can make this more granular. You'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, we have 16 marks. So a mark in Tableau Talk is a bar or a circle or any element of the visualization that, you, that you're, you've chosen. So I'm gonna do something quickly. I'm gonna ch change this to be a circle. Exactly the same values, just a bit more difficult to understand. Um, and then I'm going to bring in my, I'm gonna bring in my year onto detail. You can see now we have 75 marks. So that blue field has sliced up our, our circles that we had. So we now have one circle per year between uh, or within all of our buckets of years. I've also got my state value as well, which I can bring in. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Drag that in. I now have 3,173 marks. So I have one circle per year per state now. 
but it's difficult to understand, right? Difficult to interpret. It's just a solid splodge of color. So I'm going to just double click and create a quick calculation. I'm going to do something called jittering in Tableau. I'm just going to make this entire view. So what jittering does, it introduces a dummy X axis. Um, the values on there are, are meaningless. What they've done though, is it's separated out those kind of marks that were, were on top of each other. So we can now see them a lot more clearly. So I'm gonna hide this axis because we don't need it. It doesn't mean anything. So all of these circles are on exactly the same vertical value as they were before, but they've just been spread out horizontally. We tidy up the formatting of this a little bit get rid of grid lines and get rid of zero lines, which Tableau adds in automatically. There's still a lot of uh, solid color at the bottom. So I'm going to introduce uh, some borders onto this. Uh, some black borders, these will make the circles pop out. Uh, one other little trick we can do is to reduce the opacity. So where there are lots of concentrations of circles, uh, we can see that a little, a little bit more easily. And then finally, I'm going to introduce something called the highlighter function, where we can actually go through and see the values of a particular state, how they perform um, over time. So if we go down to, was it California was one of them. So we can see in the 1990 to 94 section, we can see that outlier value that we saw in our uh, heat map and in our small multiple map as well. Okay, so we've gone from table of numbers to a heat map to a small multiple map to a bubble chart. Okay, so what I'm trying to show you here is that there's always more than one way to visualize things. Um, and depending on how you visualize them, um, your user will interpret them differently or maybe find them easier or more difficult to, to interpret. Cool, so let's. Um, Let's get you guys stuck in. So what I'd like you to do is to launch Tableau. Um, if I'm if I'm going to uh, if I'm going too fast, please put something in the chat. Um, it's with so many people, it's difficult to really gauge how fast to go. But um, I'm just going to start a new Tableau workbook. So in the meantime, you guys can please load up Tableau. Okay, so when you load up Tableau for the first time, this is the screen that you see. If you haven't used Tableau very much so far, the likelihood is that the middle section of uh, where these thumbnails are, um, they will, they will be, that will be blank. Um, got a question from Anita, does the maps include the UK? Uh, yes, it does. I'll talk a little bit more about maps soon. Um, also got someone who is unable to, to download, no worries, um, just, just watch what's happening. Okay, so the middle bit, as soon as you open files, you, you get a thumbnail, so you can just click on those and open them straight away. Um, the left-hand side, the blue section, this is where we have our data sources. And they're, they're organized, um, we have Tableau Server, we won't talk about that today, um, but essentially we have our, our file-based data sources. These are everyday files, so Excel. If you want to open a CSV file, you choose the text file option because um, even though you open a CSV in Excel normally, it's actually a text file. Um, and if you work with JSON data, which is a kind of nested data structure, Tableau will, um, will parse all of that out for you um, and kind of unnest it for you. So it'll, it makes it pretty easy for you. Um, we also have a PDF connector as well in Tableau. So if you have a PDF file, normally you can't, um, you can't analyze those, they're, they're kind of, fixed right you just look at them and read them but if there's a table of numbers in the pdf that you have then actually tableau will be able to recognize where that table of numbers is and bring that in as if it was a spreadsheet or, or whatever and so you can analyze the numbers in a pdf which is pretty cool um spatial files so spatial files are, are dot shp files normally um or dot kml files which are google earth files um, so further to the map question from Anita on the chat. So Tableau will go down to, to certain levels of geography in each country um, out of the box. Now, Tableau can't go down to every single level of geography in every single country because that's a lot of coordinates that it needs to store. So 
typically it will recognize cities, states, um, counties, you know, the more, um, I guess the more common, commonly used geographic fields. Um, if you wanted to do something at a more kind of niche geographical level, so let's, let's say maybe parliamentary constituencies in the UK, um, you can get that, you can download shapefiles for free um, from a variety of different places, so data.gov, um, ONS, the Office for National Statistics, uh, Ordnance Survey as well, all of these sites. Um, the NHS has lots for kind of NHS regions, that sort of thing. Um, you can download these and Tableau can bring them in and you can actually join them to your source data and then map, do a map at that level, which is quite cool. Um, and every country in the world seems to have a similar website for um, you know, geography you know, with free shape files to download. So if there's something you really want to map, I'd really suggest that um, if Tableau can't do it natively, just look online for a shape file and then you'd have to join it to your data. Uh, statistical files, if you use um, SPSS, you can bring in SPSS files here as well. You can also connect to a, a wide variety of databases. Now, I was a consultant for four years and I think I connected to about six of those in total. So most businesses are, are using, um, well, Excel is used everywhere, but in terms of databases, um, Oracle, SQL Server, um, Postgres, MySQL, uh, increasingly things like uh, Amazon Redshift are being used as well, which is a cloud-based database. Um, so things like that would be the typical um, databases you might look to connect to. Um, there's also a full suite of Google products as well. So with every release of, of Tableau, they're including new data connections as well, and that's increasingly using uh, cloud-based data sources as well. So you can, if you want to do website analysis or web traffic analysis, you could use Google Analytics. Um, there's a native connector for that. Um, there's also these things called web data connectors, which are designed by the community. Uh, Tableau don't make them themselves, but they enable you to connect to things like Twitter. You can download your Twitter data or Facebook data. Um, there's a whole load of them. Basically, companies that have an API, um, you can you can build a web data connector to um, as long as the API is open to, to bring that that data down. And then, if there's anything you want to connect to that isn't in the list, you have these other other databases connected connectors here at the bottom. Um, if you're on a Windows machine, I, I'm on a Mac here. Windows uh, have have a, a bigger or a longer list of, of available databases to connect to. Um, some technologies don't allow connection from a Mac, hence the, the Mac connectors are, are not as comprehensive. On the right hand side, this section is quite is ignored quite a lot. So there are some great training videos on Tableau's website. Uh, I really encourage you to go and look at those. I'll show you where they are later, uh, or you can get to them through here. Um, there are some resources, some blogs. Tableau forums are excellent. If you have a question that you you can't, you know, you don't know the answer to, you can put it onto the forums, and people around the world are incentivized to answer questions. And then at the bottom right, we have a link to Tableau Public, which I'll talk about later as well. And then we have these sample workbooks. To be honest, I've never really opened them. Um, there's, if you want examples of how to do things, there are some really good ones available online. So um, I've never really had the, the need to, to open those. Okay, so just to remind you, we're gonna be using, if I go back to my file share, we're going to be using this sample EU Superstore spreadsheet. So if you look back in the chat, uh, there's a message from me at the beginning uh, with a URL which will lead us to that. So if you haven't already, please could you go to that file share? You need to go into the data folder at the top. And then we're going to download the sample e superstore.xls to work with. Okay. So to connect, um, Connect to our Excel, we're going to choose Microsoft Excel. And you guys follow along now, please, if you can. If anyone needs a bit more time, please put it in the chat and I can, I can wait a couple of minutes. But for now, we're going to choose Microsoft Excel. That's going to bring up a, a file explorer interface for you. So 
you're going to na navigate to wherever that spreadsheet is downloaded. I've downloaded it recently, so I'm going to go to here, click on it, and then click open. And you should get to this screen. This is our, our kind of data loading screen. What I'd encourage you to do when you're when you're working with Tableau or or really for any any data analysis tool or any other data visualization tool you, you may look at um, or you may use is to actually look at the data set before you start. So look and see what the what the level of detail of your data set is. And, and by level of detail, I mean uh, the kind of granularity of it. What does each row mean? Um, because that's going to have an effect on how you analyze it. And we're going to have a quick look at the spreadsheet we've downloaded. Hopefully it'll give, give people who need it a bit more time. And this is a spreadsheet. This is the, the this Tableau's um, kind of demo data set. Ah, okay. Someone wants me to share the link again. One second. Just put that back in the chat. I think if people have turned up a bit, little bit late and haven't seen it, they can't see the history. So I'm going to put that back in. Okay. So this is the data set that we're that we're looking at. So this is a fictional superstore. Um, by that we can see we have order IDs. Uh, we have an order date, we have a ship date, when the product was shipped, how it was shipped, who bought it, uh, where they live. We have uh, some product information, so what they bought. Um, and then we have some kind of metrics on the far right hand side. Okay, so sales, quantity, discount, profit. Um, so it's quite a lot of information in this data set. And each row in this, in this uh, data set re represents a transaction, um, and each transaction rolls up to an order ID. You see we've got order IDs here, and we've got multiple rows of data which relate to these order IDs. So I'm already learning um, a little bit about my data set here. And you know, having used Tableau for a little bit, this, this is helping me kind of formulate some ideas about how I might go about interpreting it. So, this data set actually is, is, is really good. Um, the subject isn't particularly interesting, but it's, it's very well designed. So we get some good trends. Tableau actually have a whole department of people that work on this. And um, you'll find that you have the latest version of this in Tableau um, on your computers, but they change the values ever so slightly depending on what version you use. So it's better if we all use the same one. Okay, so we can also see we've got three tabs in our spreadsheet as well. We have returns and we have people. As well, there's not a huge amount of data in those, um, but they're there nonetheless. But most of our data is in this orders tab. So I'm going to go back to, to Tableau now. And we can see on the left hand side of the screen, we have orders, people, and returns. So we have our, our same tabs of data um, that are in our spreadsheet. If this was a database, normally you'd have a drop down to select um, whichever schema you want to use within a database, and all the tables would be there as well. In this case, we have. Um, we have different tabs in our spreadsheet. Underneath, we have these named ranges. We're not gonna talk about those. These named ranges are, are specific to Excel. So um, they're basically where you can identify different sections of your spreadsheet and Tableau will pick that up, but we're not gonna do that today. Um, you can actually view the data. So if you click on the little grid to the right-hand side of the tabs, you can view the data. You can see we've got 10,000 rows in here. Um, we get those same columns as well. We can also see what we're connected to in the top left. So sample EU Superstore, I've got in brackets 22, I've downloaded this 22 times so far. Um, also the data type, so Microsoft Excel, etc. So first of all, to get data into Tableau, we need to decide which tab we want to work with. So we're gonna choose our orders tab and we're gonna left click and drag that into the middle where it says, helpfully drag tables here. The Tableau shows us a preview of our data. And 
on the right hand side we can see we can see we have a thousand rows of preview of our data now the reason Tableau gives you a thousand rows is that if you, you could be connected to a database with hundreds of millions of rows there's no point in Tableau rendering all of that essentially what you what you're looking for here is whether Tableau has, has correctly categorized your data or not and we'll see those uh, those columns of data exactly the same as in our spreadsheet um, on the top of the columns, you'll see we have these different icons. So there's a hash sign. So the hash sign means that that's a numerical field. Tableau's identified it as a numerical field. ABC, that means it's a string field or a text field. Um, there's a little calendar icon. So Tableau, Tableau interprets dates very efficiently as well. So you've probably all seen uh, different formats of dates. Maybe some dates have got forward slashes uh, to uh, delimit it, like in, like in what we've got here. Uh, but you could also have full stops, you could have hyphens, you could have the American format where, where the month is first. Um, all sorts of different ways of having dates and, and Tableau will interpret all of those accordingly. Um, if it's a date time field, so if you have a date and time of the day as well, you'll get that same icon, but it'll have a little clock in the bottom right hand corner as well to show that. As we move across, we can see I talked a little bit about maps earlier. We can see that uh, we've got three geographical fields that Tableau has recognized, city, state, and country. Tableau is looking always in the headers of your, of your columns for kind of geographic um, terms that will enable it to allocate a geographic role to those columns. Um, in this case, city, state, and country, it's recognized. And then on the right-hand side, we have our metrics as well. So our, our sales, our quantity, our discount and our profit for each of those transactions. We can manipulate this, this screen if we want to. It comes out in data source order, so that's, that means the order of the columns in your spreadsheet or your database. And sometimes it can be difficult to find the column that you want, so particularly if it's a really wide data source, so you can sort them um, alphabetically, etc. Uh, we can use this icon here to change them into a list if you want to. All of these things help you get to the relevant field a lot more easily. If Tableau has incorrectly classified any of your data, um, and generally it's pretty good with this, it, it, sometimes it, um, it does get it wrong, um, we can click on any of those icons and we can reallocate that column to being a different data type if we want to. And if it's a geographical field, we have these geographical roles, Tableau's auto automatically published. So we populated this, um, and these are the the fields that it can it can recognise, or the types of uh, geography it can recognise straight away. Okay. Other things to talk about on this screen. So, top right we have the connection type. So Tableau defaults to a live connection to our data source, and in most cases this will be absolutely fine. I've got a question from JBL, JB15608. Um, if there is a cell containing incorrect data, maybe a date with too many digits, will it highlight the cell? It won't highlight the cell, but it will probably, um, it will probably give you a different data, data type. So um, with a date, it might give you a text field or something like that. And you could then go through and see exactly where, um, where that was, or you could actually create a chart from it and that would help you figure out where that data um, was incorrect. Okay, so going back to the connection types, top right hand corner, live and extract. A live connection means that every time you drag something out in Tableau, Tableau is issuing um, a query to your underlying data source and saying you know, how many, you know, how much was the sales value and then the data source is returning the sales value uh, in an aggregated, aggregated format to, uh, to Tableau, which then renders the, the visualization. And what you can happen sometimes, what can happen sometimes is you may experience some latency. So typically uh, there's a few things that can, that can give you latency. And by that, I mean, you drag something out, it takes a while for something to happen. Um, so the power of your computer is one. If you've got a very slow computer, that can also um, slow things down. If you're going across a network, so if you're connecting to a database within an organization uh, with a slow network and lots of people using it, there can be a bottleneck in there. Um, and again, that can delay the, the response from that data source. 
also the data sources themselves, some databases respond much faster than others. So um, that can also be a factor. But if you're experiencing latency, you can choose the extract option. What that means is Tableau will pull the data from the source file or source um, system and create a .hyper file, which is Tableau's own uh, data source. Um, and it's kind of comp compressed and optimized for use in Tableau. You can save it locally so you can bypass all of the kind of latency that you might, you might experience. And then finally on here, top right, this is ignored quite a lot. It's called data source filters. And what I'd also encourage you to do is, is rather than bringing in the whole data source, figure out exactly what it is you want to analyze. Okay, so, so for context, if you're looking at a data source which has got 20 years worth of data, if you're only interested in the last three years, there's no point in bringing all 20 years in. You may as well filter that out before you start, and Tableau has to do less work to, um, yeah, to analyze that data. You can always change it later on as well. So for example, if I, if I add, don't worry about following along with this bit, if I add a filter here on country, and then maybe filter it just for Austria, I'll click OK. You'll notice that all of the values here now relate only to Austria, and I've got 270 rows. Okay, so I filtered out everything else to concentrate on what I want to, to analyze. I'm just going to remove that so we have everything. OK, let's, let's get building. So let's go down bottom of the screen. You should have sheet one highlighted in orange. So let's click on that. And this is our, our canvas, we call it. This is where we create charts in Tableau. And if you want to create a dashboard in Tableau, you have to create the charts independently. So each, each chart will have its own tab. And then the dashboard is where you bring them together and, and they become interactive, or you make them interactive. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll build, we'll build a dashboard and we will talk a little bit about some of the functionality and about some of these icons that you can see and what they do um, kind of as we go. Okay, another thing I'd encourage you to do is, is to have some questions in your mind about what, what you want to find out about the data. Okay, so we're gonna imagine we're, build, we're gonna build a dashboard um, to do with our business, we want to analyze you know, how the business is performing. So we're gonna ask some questions about that. And, and if you have questions in your mind beforehand, this will help you, um, help guide you in your analysis as well. And probably waste less time as well. So we know we've, we've got a, a business, we're selling things. Um, probably one of the key business questions that we want to, we want to know is what are we selling? How much, how much money are we, what's our revenue? How much money are we making? That sort of thing. Okay. So on the left hand side, we have all of our fields from our spreadsheet. Now these, these are divided into two sections, as you can see, we have ones with blue icons and we have ones with green icons. The blue icons I mentioned earlier, these are called dimensions. Um, these are, are categorical data, okay? Things like IDs, countries, product names, stuff like that. Uh, things that when we introduce them into our, into our visualizations, they're going to slice our data. They're gonna make it more granular. Underneath that, in the green section, these are our measures, these are our metrics. So our, our values that we'll want to analyze. And then we have some other fields here. So we have uh, anything in italics is Tableau generating a field automatically. Um, where you see latitude generated and longitude generated, that means Tableau has found some geographic fields in your data set and has, has attempted to match the coordinates from those. Um, and then we have our orders count. This is a simple way of um, of counting all of the rows in our data set. So let's, let's start analyzing it. So what are we selling? We have a subcategory field here on the left-hand side. So let's grab that. We're gonna left click and drag, and we're gonna put that onto rows. You'll notice when you drag anything out in Tableau, there are some orange outlines around certain areas of the screen. This means that you can drop whatever you've picked up in any of those areas. So we're just gonna drop our subcategory onto rows and very much like a pivot table in Excel, it summarized all of the different values contained within that subcategory column in our data set. That's great, but it's not really telling us anything apart from what we're selling. Um, we need really now to, to bring in a metric or a measure here. So we're gonna take our sales 
and we're going to put our sales onto columns. Again, left clicking and dragging. And Tableau's given us a bar chart. Um, Tableau's got some quite clever algorithms in the background where it will give you what it feels is the most appropriate chart type from a data visualization best practice perspective. Um, in most cases, that's going to be a bar chart. Bar charts are easily the best kind of chart um, to visualize categorical data in most cases. Um, Tableau will never give you a pie chart straight out of the box. Uh, pie charts are, when, particularly when you get above three or four segments, they are, are notoriously difficult to interpret because the human eye, going back to our pre-attentive attributes we talked about, um, the human eye uh, interprets length much more efficiently than, than angles, for example. So we've all seen pie charts where you've got thousands of little, little segments. It's very difficult to see whether one segment is any bigger or any smaller than the one next to it in a lot of cases. So um, with, a, with a bar chart, you don't necessarily get that. It's much more easy to understand. So we've got our bar chart. Let's make this fit our screen as well. So at the top of the screen, you should have this um, little drop down called standard. It says standard, but it's uh, got some different things in there. We're going to choose entire view. So this is going to fit to our screen. So we're using our screen more efficiently. And let's have a look at our icons in the top. We have our little toolbar at the top. So let's start, start from the left. So we have this Tableau icon, the Tableau logo. That's like a toggle back to that load up screen that we saw. Um, you don't really ever need to use this, um, but it's there if you want to. Um, I, I've never had to use that. Um, you can add new data sources and stuff in here, which is probably the only reason you'd want to go back to here anyway. Um, we have a back button. The back button in Tableau is your friend. In Excel, it only goes back a certain amount of times. Um, in Tableau, once you open the file, you can go back as many times as you want um, until you opened it, basically. Um, so even before you last saved it. So you can, if you make a mistake, you can go back to that, rectify it, and carry on. Uh, we have a forward button as well. I haven't done enough yet to light that up. Um, we have a save button next as well. So kind of universal icon for that. If I click on that, You'll notice we get two options save our Tableau files with a .twb and a .twbx. Um, the .twb doesn't contain the data. The .twbx is called a packaged workbook and it does contain the data. So if you want to email a dashboard that you've created to someone else, for example, you need to make sure that they have access to that data. Okay? Because if you email them a .twb file, and let's say you have the data source that you use to create that saved on your desktop. When the other person opens that file, Tableau is going to be looking for the file or the data on your desktop, which clearly won't be possible if it's on someone else's computer. So you need to save it as a TWBX, a packaged workbook, because that will contain the data source as well. And then you send the whole lot to someone else. Okay. okay. So we've gone back to our, our chart. We then have some other icons as well. I'm not going to go through every single one, but the next one with a kind of silo with a plus. Um, we can add other data sources in here. Now, you're not limited to just one. You can have, you can have lots of data sources in here. I'd, I'd, I'd probably urge you to exercise caution before adding too many because the file can, can get very big. Um, performance might suffer, but you can certainly add in you know, I've seen plenty of workbooks with you know, 10, 15 data sources in there um, over the years. Um, next one we'll talk about is this one here. So you can create new worksheets, new dashboard, and new story. We're not going to deal with stories today, but they're like, um, I guess, PowerPoint for Tableau. Um, you can also do the same thing at the bottom of the screen. These three icons at the bottom do exactly the same thing. You'll find out that but Tableau has often multiple ways of doing things. So um, it's up to personal preference how you do it, uh, which method you choose. Uh, you can duplicate the sheet with the next one. Uh, you can also do the same thing by right-clicking on the sheet and du selecting duplicate. 
the advantages of, of duplication is that let's say you spend ages formatting a particular chart um, to how you want it rather than having to do all that formatting again for another chart you can just duplicate the one that you've done and then swap out the fields and that um, that formatting will will remain so you don't have to keep doing the formatting all the time uh, if you've decided that what you've done is 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 not good or you don't want to you don't want to keep it um, the next button with a kind of cross next to it this is a clear all so you can just clear clear the screen um, but if you want to get it back you can press your back button to get that back and it returns the next icon is really cool and you, you saw me use this actually in the measles demo uh, you can swap rows and columns or swap your axes so if you wanted a, a vertical bar chart you can actually swap it around just by using this icon in most cases though i would suggest using a horizontal bar chart because it's easier to see the labels um, or the, the headers of what each bar mean uh, if you're using a bar chart to represent time which is a valid use of a bar chart i would suggest using a vertical one because we normally associate movement over time um, as a left to right kind of movement so let's leave it as a, a horizontal one we then have our sorting icons as well uh, sorting can get really complex in tableau if you want it to these are a kind of easy way of doing it so i think it'll make sense for this to, to be sorted descending so let's all click on that and you should end up with a bar chart like this um, we can then add labels as well so this um, this t icon with a hash line around it um, I'll just interject at the moment. I'm getting some questions on chat, which is great. Um, I will probably dedicate a few minutes at the end to um, to go through these rather than interrupting at the moment if it's kind of the questions relevant, but not particularly to this point, but we'll, we'll get to them at the end, okay? But yeah, keep, keep asking questions if you want to. Um, let's put our labels on. So we're gonna click this little T icon at the top and then our labels appear at the end of the bars. Now, we're doing something called double encoding here at the moment. So we need to, to bear in mind that space is precious for us when we're visualizing. Our, our screen real estate is precious, so we need to use it as effectively as possible. Um, so we need to avoid duplicating information unnecessarily. I would suggest only using labels or an axis. Don't use both. So I personally prefer using labels, um, but it's, as I said, it's a personal choice. Um, let's get rid of this axis at the bottom. Uh, what we can do is right click on it so the whole thing highlights and then we're going to choose the show header option in the little pop-up that comes up um, and just click on that and that will get rid of our axis. If we want to get it back for whatever reason we can go up to our sales. Um, the green pills that we see, the green fields, our metrics are called continuous in Tableau speak and they always give us an axis. Okay. Um, as opposed to dimensions, the blue ones, which will give us headers. So I can click on each of these, it's giving me headers. Sales gives me an axis. But if you want to get the axis back, click on sales and then choose show header and it will appear again. Okay, so that's cool. We're, we're seeing what we're selling in our business. However, if you recall in our spreadsheet, we also have a, a profit field as well. Now, we're not limited to working with one measure or one green pill in our charts uh, particularly not in bar charts anyway so we're seeing what we're selling but actually we're not we don't know whether we're making any money on these or not because we haven't got a profit value in them you know maybe our our overheads are bigger than the sales value so let's um let's grab our profit and we're going to drag profit out using left our left mouse button and we're going to drop it onto our color button in this sort of kind of central um bit that says marks this is called our marks card in tableau and it's our marks card is is kind of essential for the, the appearance of our charts it's really part of the magic of tableau where you can as the button suggests you can change the colors you can change the sizes labels um tool tips tool tips are what pop up when you um when you hover over something um you can also change the the chart types as well by clicking the drop down so we've now, we've now included our profit field as well, and we can see something immediately has popped out. Um, we can see that tables are, are losing us money. So even though we're selling 105,000 of those, uh, we're actually losing 21,000 almost. Uh, so something, something's not right there um, within our business. So that's jumped out immediately. 
Um, I normally ask now, why do you think Tableau has chosen a blue and orange color palette? Why not red and green? You know, typically green is good, red is bad. Um, the reason for that is uh, it, it's color blindness. So a surprising amount of people are red, green color blind. Um, if you have something, a chart, for example, like this, where um, you would use a red and green color scheme, those colorblind people could not differentiate between those two colors. Um, there's a really cool little product you can get called Color Oracle. This color is in the American spelling Oracle. Uh, you can Google it, it's free. It sits in your system tray and it's a color blindness checker. And when we're producing dashboards for clients, what we tend to do is we run everything through Color Oracle. But there are similar ones as well, but just to check for kind of colorblind friendly um, or check that it is colorblind friendly. Um, it may seem like a small point, but imagine you're producing a dashboard which is going to get published to. Uh, let's say at UBS, UBS Bank have 15,000 people using Tableau. If you publish something that some people can't see, the chances are there are going to be quite a few colorblind people within those 15,000 users. You're going to get lots of emails back saying, could you just change this? I can't see it. Or maybe they just missed the point completely and there's important information in there. So just bear in mind um, these, these things when you're producing visualizations. And I'm going to show you what, um, what a colorblind person would see i'm going to change don't worry about following along for this bit i'm going to edit my colors and change this to be um, red and green and i'm going to fire up color oracle i'm hoping this works on a double screen setup um, i'm going to change this to being uh, the most common form of color blindness so red green It hasn't worked. That's annoying. It's actually gone onto my other screen. Oh, well, okay. Well, if this had worked, which typically in a live demo, it hasn't, um, you would see various ranges of, of dark green there. The, the tables wouldn't be, you wouldn't know that they were any different to, um, to the other green ones. However, with a blue and orange, this would come up as green and purple for someone who's colorblind. So they'd still be able to see the difference. Uh, but anyway, Color Oracle, check it out. It works well on a, a single screen setup, but not so well apparently on a, on a double screen one. Okay, so that's our first chart. Let's rename it. I'd really recommend you rename all of your charts. So you can double click where it says sheet one at the bottom. And let's call this bars. Otherwise, Tableau creates sheet one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. You can very easily end up with 30 sheets and you'll forget what each one um, is dealing with. Okay, so that's our first chart. So we can see we've got a problem with tables. We're already finding out some information about our, our, our business. So let's, let's create another sheet. And you can use either the icons at the top, which is new worksheet, or what I, I prefer to do, again, it's personal choice, you can use the icons at the bottom. So I'm gonna use new worksheet and that creates us another blank worksheet. Let's do something by uh, you know, sort of map. Uh, let me have a look at the maps. You can use the following one. There's a filled map or a shape map. And depending on which order of uh, which order you have the fields in, that will determine um, what kind of map you get. So we'll create five kinds of maps. Let's just call that we'll click on country. So what we can see. Let's see what we get. Oh, Monica says I'm breaking up a bit. Uh, I'm hoping you can you can hear me okay. Uh, I've got no kind of barometer as to how I sound at this end. Um, okay, apparently I, I can, you can hear me now. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, ping me in the chat if. Um, if it's okay. Right, so let's double click. If you didn't get that, let's double click on country. Um, like we saw with the measles, Tableau will look at the 